Hello, hello, how are you? This is Dr. Kim. So in today's case, you're seeing a 15-year-old patient with two supernumeraries. Not just one, but two supernumeraries. So let's find out where they are and what they are doing to the around surrounding structures. So as I always like to do, let's start out with the axial plane. So as I go up and down through this maxillary arch, keep in mind this patient is only 15 years of age. So we see developing uh, crowns of the third molar that are not at the position of the rest of the teeth, suggesting this, these teeth are more superiorly located. Now, as we go toward inferiorly, um, to where the roots are uh, positioned, we are seeing two very uh, radio-opaque structures consistent with enamel layer bilaterally. So here we have identified two supernumerary teeth. And if I move uh, these two teeth to this green plane, which is consistent with this coronal plane that you see at the top, you can better visualize the overall shape and angulation of these two teeth. You can see that the one here uh, by tooth number three and four are more buccally tipped, somewhat buccally tipped, whereas this is a lot more just kind of straight up and down on the other side. Additionally, if I were to compare the size of the crowns, this one over here is definitely larger than the other one. So why don't we start out with the one that's larger on the patient's right side. So to confirm its precise location, we see that it's located um, between tooth number three and four and palatal to tooth number three. But unfortunately, in this patient's case, well, let me move the crosshair out of the way. If you can uh, evaluate the spatial relationship of these two teeth, you see that the crown of the supernumerary has caused a rather significant resorption of tooth number three, so much so that it's just about to enter the pulpal chamber of that tooth. Let's see if we can confirm that in other planes. So right about here, there's that pulpal chamber, right? Here's the follicle of supernumerary. It is just about there. Maybe it hasn't fully entered into the pulpal chamber, but you can see it's almost, it's, uh, it's basically there. <laughs> and let's look at this sagittal view. Again, has caused a significant resorption. Primarily, I want to say um, this palatal root, but even the distal buckle and part of the mesial buckle root is affected by this uh, supernumerary. So, it, when we when I see that, I, I wonder if it's better to extract this resorbed uh, number three rather than taking out this impacted uh, supernumerary. Because there's nothing wrong with this supernumerary tooth. There's no root resorption. Uh, it's nice and straight with no dilaceration. I think they would be able to perfectly just ortho use the orthodontics to bring that tooth down. So that's something that I think a clinician should consider as a potential option. Uh, in terms of the shape of the crown, it looks very much like the traditional or classic uh, premolar with two major cusps. That's the buccal and lingual cusp. And um, they can bring that down and then perhaps put a crown on top of it so that it can have an appearance of a molar. That's certainly a possibility, I think. Okay, now let's take a look at the other side. Here's the other one. Once again, position between and palatal to number 13 and 14. So that's the mesiobuccal, palatal, and distal buccal root of number 15, excuse me, number 14. And um, as, you, as I go up and down, while the crown is certainly abutting these two roots, 
we don't see any uh, significant resorption like we saw on the other side, thankfully, right? And so this is something I think the surgeons can, you know, uh, simply do a quick flap and then expose the crown by removing very little amount of the uh, bone and being able to just take that tooth out nicely. Okay. So there it is. And the root apex is extending kind of somewhat into the maxillary sinus. When I say into, it's not like literally into the maxillary sinus, the floor of the sinus is still intact, but you see that the shape of the floor is, has been now altered as a result of this uh, impacted supernumerary. So lastly, let's confirm that finding in 3D rendering view. So here, again, these two teeth, this is three and four. Here's 13 and 14, and these are the impacted teeth, supernumerary. So one by three and four, again, cause rather significant resorption of the palatal root, and it's somewhat distally tipped. So we can nicely confirm that. Whereas we look at the other side, it's very much, this is position up and down, uh, crown itself is smaller and hasn't caused any root resorption, thankfully, right? All right, everyone, another interesting case, right? So I hope you find uh, something new in my videos and be sure to subscribe and share this channel with your classmates or friends or colleagues. Uh, this is intended for all dental professionals, including dental students, um, residents, uh, practitioners, um, private practitioner, academicians, uh, and um, uh, and dental hygiene students as well. So, and and also dental assistants. Anyone who's interested in dental radiology, feel free to share uh, this channel and share this content. I'll be happy if you can uh, take something away from this these videos. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Take care.